It was so bizarre how they were injured. What happened to these nine students, experienced hikers that were found in this condition all these years ago that nobody got any answers for. And so now that Russia is reopening the case in 2019, they're giving out these answers that are not making a lot of sense. And let's not forget that originally the Soviets suppressed all of these files they suppressed this case, and some would say that a lot of the evidence that they had found when this incident actually happened was completely covered up, and you can't find it to this day. Now, when the survivor was asked what he thought actually happened, there was originally going to be 10 that was going to go on this hike. He maintained, until he passed away in 2013, that he believed without a shadow of a doubt that the military was involved. He believed that his friends stumbled across a military exercise. He even said that when the military found the campsite, that they were far more concerned with what these skiers were doing in that area versus what actually happened to them. And even worse, when he was asked to identify his friend's belongings from the scene, some of the items didn't even belong to any of them. It's almost like Somebody had went in and took a bunch of their stuff and put a bunch of like random stuff in their place for some strange reason. A spokesperson that was basically over this investigation said that it was either a, an avalanche or a snow slab or a hurricane. And you can only imagine like how this spread in the newspapers there in Russia, because again, this is nine experienced, very experienced hikers to leave their tent, cutting it from the inside to walk off to their deaths. None of it made any sense. And then again, the way that their bodies were found. This survivor would also go on to say, and making a pretty darn good point, that if something as mundane as an avalanche caused the death of his friends, why did the government close the case so quickly? And why did they mark it as classified? They were all level twos, and this was the last hike that they needed to become the highest level, the most experience that they could get at that time. I don't know if it's still the same. And he was all packed up and ready to go, and he had to turn around and go back because of his sciatica. I bet you he felt so sad. So I'm going to put this in layman's terms the best way that I can. Basically, the formal statement or conclusion of this was that they believed that the way that these experienced hikers and campers, again, who did this all the time, the way that they set up their tent is what led to the slab avalanche. And they believed that this created severe yet non fatal injuries to the hikers before they died later of hypothermia. So they think that they set the tent up in a way that created this avalanche. It came down, gave them these all these injuries, and then this is when they left and eventually froze to death. The coroner came out and said that they agreed that their autopsies actually supported this avalanche theory. And this coroner said that, that they believed that the avalanche actually fell on top of them while they were possibly sleeping, which wouldn't have killed them, but it did injure them and it forced them to run out of their tent into the cold night without proper clothing, which then led them to dying of hypothermia. But then officials also said that they didn't claim that they had basically solved this mystery and that since no one survived to tell the story, but they were rather just showing what they believed was like the most probable scenario out of everything. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I don't think that that's what happened, especially after seeing the x-ray of the chest plate. It was like they were just broken. It, it was so bizarre how they were injured. It was also found that one of the female hikers was missing her tongue, her eyes, part of her lips and some of her facial tissue. And there was also a fragment of her skull that was missing. A few of them had their chest so damaged, it looked like they had been in a severe, like car crash or car accident. The bodies that were covered in snow were only covered in a very small layer of snow. Like they had passed away there and it continued to snow. There was even over a hundred expeditions in the same area after this incident 
and none of those expeditions experienced any avalanche-like conditions. So what they were the only ones and there was absolutely no sign of it. It was almost like just a theory that they put out there to just dead the situation, which is weird because why would they even reopen it in 2019 from something that happened back in 1959. Also, the footprints leading away from the tent were inconsistent with a group of nine people running away from something. They found normal walking single file footprints. There were many, many theories about this situation. There were people that believed that it was an alien attack. There were lots of people and still are that believe that it was an abominable snowman attack. And these theories ranged all the way to potential radiation fallout from secret weapon testing. There was testing of radiological weapons in this area. And this is based mostly on the discovery of radioactivity on some of the clothes, as well as the descriptions of their bodies by relatives. Like why would some of these hikers have radioactive chemicals of some sort? on them. The relatives said that the hikers actually had orange skin and gray hair, which is very interesting. However, this 2019 investigation only took three theories into account and all three were weather related. So it's kind of like why even reopen this case all these years later, if you're only even going to consider weather related incidents, especially in the conditions that some of these bodies were found. One author actually concluded that the wind created a vortex which can produce an infrasound capable of inducing panic attacks in humans. So this author claims that because of this wind over the mountains that made this like insane sound to them, it caused all these hikers to panic. And this person, this author also believes that the hikers were then because of this panic driven to leave the tent by whatever means necessary. And they fled down the slope. And the author believes that by the time the hikers would be like down the hill, that infrasound would have, would have stopped by then and they would regain their composure. But they, at this point they would be in the dark and unable to return back to their shelter. He says that the traumatic injuries suffered by three of the victims were the result of them stumbling over the edge of the ravine in the darkness and then landing on rocks at the bottom. Although I don't agree with that theory, to me, even that sounds different than the avalanche theory. Again, especially because when they came back, there's no sign of an avalanche. It is actually highly speculated that the campsite fell within the path of the uh, Soviet parachute mine exercise. This theory alleges that the hikers were woken up by loud explosions. Then they fled the tent in a barefoot panic and found themselves unable to get back for supplies back to their tent. After some of the members froze to death, the others used their clothing and then were fatally injured by possibly one of these parachute mines. And there are records of parachute mines being tested by the Soviet back then, by the, by the Soviet military in the area around the time that the hikers were there. Parachute mines uh, detonate when they are still in the air rather when they're striking the earth's surface and they can cause injuries similar to those experienced by these hikers. Another theory, and I've seen a lot of people talk about this one, is that these hikers suffered from a phenomenon called paradoxal undressing. And this is when people are found like when they're dying, they're like on their way to pass over, okay? from hypothermia, uh, some of them will actually take off their clothes because their brain interprets this extreme cold as actually feeling so hot that you take all of your clothes off. I don't know if that theory is accurate. It seems more plausible that when the other ones passed away, the other, the other hikers took their clothes to try to keep themselves warm. I just think animals, I think animals found their bodies and you know, that's what, that's what I think happened. 
But I definitely agree with Yuri that the military was involved in some way, somehow. And I also think that's why they reopened it in 2019. I think that they were trying to possibly figure out what they were doing back in 1959, which is why they reopened the case and started looking at everything again, because it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. How are they gonna figure that out? How are they gonna find out what happened back then anyways? I find it hard to believe that nine experienced hikers would just get out of their tent and leave their safety, their belongings, their little heater that they had in there, everything to just leave walking in the middle of the night. And for nine of them to, all of them to end up like this. It's so crazy. Thank y'all for watching this video and I will see y'all in the next one. Love you guys, bye.